I've cooked the venison curry, but because it's fillet and I don't want it to go too far, that's just on hold for the moment. And it's in a rich, very pokey, slightly violent gravy. Um, the next thing I'm going to cook is my dad's prawn curry. This is very, very important to me. It would always seem to be cooked when my mother was away. And, um, and it was a very competitive moment because um, my brother and I loved it so much that we would count the prawns on our plates. The only person who was allowed to have more was Dad because he cooked it. But if I found my brother had got more than me or he found out I'd got more prawns than him, terrible fights would break out and um, it was an ugly business. But um, I cook this a lot. It reminds me of him. So I've got some onions in here, again, cooked in lots of ghee or butter if you can't find ghee, but ghee is very easy to find. OK, to this I'm going to add, I think, one of my favourite spices of all, delicious cardamom. And I've just popped the little black pods out of their shells. And, but actually, I've decided to change my mind, as I normally do at the last minute, and I'm going to put all the skins in as well, too. So cardamom and onions and ghee so far. A couple of bay leaves. My dad, um, a very adventurous cook, always trying new things, but I think this was probably influenced heavily by his um, life as a diplomat. When he was British ambassador, he spent a, um, in Laos. He kind of travelled around there a lot and around Burma. And, um, and I think this is kind of of there. And especially because it has um, vermouth in it, which I think would be the French influence on that part of the world. Right, so to that I'm going to add a little bit of turmeric. Not too much, it's quite punchy stuff. Delicious turmeric. Stir that in, cook the spices out a bit. You don't want that dry, kind of powdery, raw element. See, good things are happening already. Cardamom, onions, turmeric and bay leaf. I'm going to add one teaspoon of mild curry powder. This dish is, is a mild, gentle, soothing thing, not an aggressive and hot thing. OK. I'm going to add a good scratching of nutmeg. And you can be quite kind of heavy with it here. And now for the vermouth. You don't want, you want the alcohol element to kind of cook away, so let all of that evaporate. There we go. And flame and bring it back to its kind of onion state. Um, now the last thing to go in is saffron. Good saffron should have that lovely iodine smell. It has a very strong taste, iodine apart from also a fabulous colour. The saffron is the um, stamens from a crocus and they've been soaked in water, and in they go. Right, so the base is there. What I need next is some coconut milk. Look at that, I love swirling it around, that kind of lovely marbled yellow and white. And just one green chilli. I'm gonna put another one in. It won't make it that hot, it'll just give it a very, very faint edge. This is kind of my father on a plate, this. I love cooking this because it reminds me of him. Right, so that's all kind of there. It's that simple. Now, for this, I don't want swanky tiger prawns from the other side of the world, or actually, come to say that, um, lobster is very good in this curry, but these are just good old North Atlantic peeled prawns. Um, if you get those little baggies in the bottom of the tray that soak up all the prawn juice, don't flip them into the bin. Squeeze them into your curry because there's lots of delicious sweet prawn juice in those. So the prawns can go in. All the juice from the bottom. The more prawniness that goes in, the better. They're cooked already, so you don't really want to leave them bubbling away and overcook them. So, and then lastly, a good splash of double cream. So, did you travel a lot with your father? I did go on lots of travels with my father. He was a very interested man, and he wanted me to be inquisitive. And I think one of the kind of, especially when it comes to food, kind of the things that he said to me that really mattered is, if you see a little road and you're interested in it and it doesn't, and you don't know where it goes, go down it and find out what's at the other end and, and always talk to a Greek goat farmer in the same way as you talk to the king of Bhutan or whatever. And as a result, things should be pretty, um, pretty good for you. Um, and especially that is, that is very much my attitude to food. A little bit of salt. And again, I'm going to heat this up at the last moment because I don't want to overcook it now. And I'm going to move on to my cauliflower curry. 